Hello everyone, my name is Brad McClure and today I want to tell you a little bit about my story. Um, I'm going to start when I was about 29 years old. I was going through a divorce. I had um, been separated for a little while. I had met a new uh, girlfriend who's now my wife. And uh, But at the time I had gotten custody of my three small boys. I ranged from about seven years old to about ten. And I worked for Frito-Lay, and Frito-Lay was not the best job to have when you had kids that you had to take care of. Uh, with Frito-Lay, you're supposed to get up in the mornings around five, four or five o'clock in the morning and start running your route. And it was good for the afternoons because you would get done with your routes normally pretty decent time. But uh, I had to figure out something because now I had three boys at home that needed to go to school and I had to get them to school, I had to get them up and get them ready in the mornings. And at first with Frito-Lay, I tried to, to make it work. Um, I would get up and I would do what I could do in the mornings and I'd drop my kids off at the school at 7.30 in the morning was the earliest I could drop them off. Uh, I actually went to the school to see if they had before daycare or something like that that I could drop them off at, but um, they didn't have anything. Um, so I had to figure out something to do with those boys. So I dropped them off at 7.30 in the morning, school opened at 8, so that wasn't too terribly early. Um, but it was kind of hard on them on cold days and rainy days or weather, but there was a roof where they could get underneath uh, that. But I really felt horrible about dropping them off that early. And uh, But at 7.30 they'd open up the school and they could go in and sit in the cafeteria until time to start. So that's what I did for a little while. Um, it wasn't working the best because with Frito-Lay you have uh, a certain route that you have to run and some of them were not in the same town I was in and the boys got out of school at 3.30 in the afternoon so I had to make sure to uh, figure out a way to take care of them. Now, I tried to hire some babysitters but you know seven, eight, and nine, ten year old boys they just uh, they were a handful and it was hard to find babysitters that would take care of really active boys and we lived in a small town so I had to figure out something um, when I'd pick them up from school sometimes I'd have to go out and finish my route which wasn't good uh, I'm sure it was against company policy to take the kids out on the route but they thought it was fun uh, we would go out and we would run finish up my route sometimes I'd have one or two stops but then I'd have to go to the warehouse and I'd work in my warehouse and uh, do my inventory and load my truck and they would get really bored with that. Uh, they were real creative though in some of the games they'd play and some of the things to keep them occupied. And then we would go home and we would do homework and I would do laundry and I'd fix supper. And uh, it was a really long, tough, grueling day. Uh, around holidays when Frito-Lay got really busy, I couldn't get it all done. Sometimes we was at the warehouse uh, till really late at night and I felt horrible. Uh, for these boys that their life was disrupted so I had to figure out something to do <clears throat> so I looked around to the different professions and tried to figure it out and I noticed that mechanics they usually went to work about eight o'clock in the morning and they uh, got off you know about five o'clock in the afternoon four o'clock in the afternoon and I thought you know I could do that uh, I've only paid one person to work on my cars when I was younger and that was because I'd had an accident I'd actually help somebody work on another one and he didn't have it properly blocked and the car fell on me and hurt me for, uh, it was pretty, pretty. Uh, it could have been way worse than it was. I, I was lucky to come out of it. Uh, did hurt me a little bit. I was out of commission for a few weeks and I had a flywheel on uh, old 1980 Sunbird that I had that had cracked and I needed somebody to put that on. So I paid a guy $100 to put that flywheel in for me. Uh, but he got it done and the car ran great afterwards so uh, but that was the only time I'd ever paid anybody back then to work on my vehicles I'd always figured it out so I thought hmm I can do this I can work on cars uh, if I can have a set schedule to work from you know eight o'clock in the morning until you know four or five o'clock in the afternoon the boys get out of school at 3 30 um, you know if I could figure out something to do with them for an hour and a half uh, I could be home by five and and do that so I quit my job and I went back to school to become a mechanic. And I didn't know they was called technicians at the time, but that's what I did. Uh, little did I know that I found out that uh, technicians make really good money. And it's been one of the best decisions of my life to become an automotive technician. 
Uh, from that particular uh, venue, I went to a high school career tech in Barsville, Oklahoma called Tri-County Tech. I had great instructors and uh, I did really well. Uh, I was 29 years old in uh, Votec and I was working uh, a, a little bit part-time, but uh, I was able to get enough money from the government and enough help and enough support system within my family that I was able to go to school full-time and take care of my boys. So we went to the school. I started in August and in the spring they had a contest called Skills USA. And I took the written test. I did really well on that. And then we went to some contests uh, around the Northeast Oklahoma and I did real well in that and I won the contest I was at. And then we went to the state contest. In that state contest we went to Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology and we had the contest for Skills USA state contest in the building that has a Ford Asset in it. And I seen all these signs up on the wall and said, what in the world is this Ford Asset thing? And so my instructor said, well, I'll find out for you. And he went and got the information and found out that the Ford Asset program it was a certification program at the college level that allows technicians to go to school half time and work half the time. And I thought, well, that's right up my alley. So I, when I got done with, oh, I placed fifth in the state at, at Skills USA contest, uh, which I thought was pretty good. I was really kind of disappointed. I wanted, you know, number one, but that was okay. I wasn't going to go to nationals anyway. I couldn't leave my kids that long to go compete nationally. So fifth was good. Fifth didn't have to go to nationals, and I was able to get some recognition out of it and won a few tools. But the most important thing about that was I found out about the Ford Asset Program. Went to the Ford Asset Program, uh, ended up with a 3.96 GPA at the OSUIT, and uh, I'd gotten some scholarships from Tri-County Tech when I went to the OSUIT. I got a scholarship from OSUIT. Uh, I got a scholarship from my sponsoring dealership that was in uh, Bartlesville, Oklahoma, Dunges uh, Ford, and I, they were really good people. And I actually got a scholarship from Pontiac Ford, Oakley Pontiac paid this guy to go to Ford program because they had a scholarship and they didn't have any students that was going to go to the college and they gave me a scholarship. So those scholarships uh, paid for four of the six trimesters at OSUIT and during the course I got really good grades and I ended up getting a scholarship for good grades that paid for my fifth semester of OSUIT. So I only had to pay for one semester of OSUIT and uh, had to buy books of course I couldn't live on campus because I had kids and I drove a hundred miles one way every day to go to school Monday through Friday because my kids and, and family was in another town a hundred miles away and they had to go to school so I did this program and I did it in two years and I made uh, money while I worked at the dealership uh, when I would get done with school or I was out of classes I would go to work at the dealership and I get paid and I was able to keep food on the table, keep a roof over our head, keep transportation un under us, and able to do the school. And when I got done with the school, I had really, really low student debt. And um, it was a good, good, great program. And I'm glad I did it. Uh, from there on, my career just went straight up. Uh, I've had a great career. Uh, I've worked at, at a couple of different dealerships around Northeast Oklahoma uh, because of living situations and having to move to take care of family and uh, uh, things like that. Uh, I was able to work at a couple of different dealerships that uh, were really good. And, and I got to know several people at different places, got to learn how business works, got to learn how technicians work. And I made, I made good money. I made really good living for my family. And, uh, but anyway, that's, that's my story. And that's how I got into automotive repair. And I don't regret it. I've made a really good living as an automotive technician. And give me a call, 918-928-7433. Uh, leave a message if I don't answer. Uh, there is a voicemail on that number. Or you can email me at oklahomaautoprofessionals at gmail.com. That's oklahomaautoprofessionals at gmail.com. If you're wanting to go to work for a Ford dealer, I can help you. If you're wanting to get some training for, to be a te Ford technician, I can help you do that. Give me a call. Thank you. Have a great day.